let's explore a new variant on this classic style of uh, oil atomizing air freshener. And I'll show you this going because it's quite nice. It's got a nice illuminated top. So I'll turn it on and then probably turn it off again once it starts spraying its aroma out. You can see the haze coming out. It's not that visual, but it is quite a strong thing when you're actually here, you can see a very vivid haze. I'm worried about this smoke detector above me. It may well detect oil vapor, which is what this is putting out. So I'll keep that to a minimum. The lighting, the diffuse lighting on the side here, uh, doesn't really do the haze any favours. Uh, if you view this directly, it's a very dense cloud of uh, oil that comes out of it. And it is oil. It's a refined oil with the aroma chemicals in it. I'm not sure whether putting oil into the air is a good thing, but then again, that's what people do when they have the oil vaporizers with the little tubs of hot water. Um, so let's get the batteries out of this and we'll take it apart because I'm hoping that they've done something exciting, maybe super minimum, minimum, bleh, miniaturized the circuitry. So I've got a little screwdriver here. Hopefully it's going to be deep enough. Don't know how many of these screws are going right into the end. The illumination of the top is a nice feature. It used to just glow around the emitter itself, but now the whole top glows, which is quite pleasing. And it is a very visual effect. It's quite nice. Uh, I have made my own oils for it by mixing essential oils with a super refined uh, oil, like say for instance, um, what do I use? I used, uh, not Trap Substitute, I used White Spirit, which is a very similar oil. Makes you realise that maybe you don't want to breathe what these things are putting out. Is there a screw here? Is that it? Oh, that is it. There's the circuit board. It's looking simple-ish so far, but that is only the components on the surface. What about the uh, bit in here? Is this going to come out? That may be latched in. Oh, that is latched in. Right, tell you what, I may have to experiment with this to get this out. Uh, but there is the atomizer disc, and the LED is actually mounted here. Right, tell you what, let's get into this a bit closer and move uh, the circuit boards. Oh, this just slides out. That's a good start. This is a bit we're interested in. The circuit board has a fairly high component count, as you'd expect. Let's get this down onto this. We'll tell you what, even better than getting down onto it. Let me take a picture of it, and then we can explore the circuitry together. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore this interesting little air freshener. On the back of the circuit board, uh, or the front if you prefer, we've got the multi-way position switch. We've got the three connectors. I like the fact they've used connectors. We've got a little crystal for a timing reference. We've got a big inductor. That's the one that's actually driving the piezoelectric element for the atomizer. And we've got a small inductor. Can you hear a train in the background? This is very close to a railway line, this place. Uh, there's a small inductor here that is used to, boot, used to boost the voltage up to 12 volts. I wondered if this was for a pass and fret. Not a pass and fret, but a remote control sense. But it turns out they've just given the option of an onboard MOSFET or an extra an, a leaded MOSFET to be put through the front. They've just left their options open, which is good. It's always good to do that. Let's take a look at the other side of the circuit board. We have what I think is a dedicated microcontroller. Probably, could it be mask programmed? It is specifically for these air fresheners. And it's interesting to note, uh, actually, it's quite, well, we'll take a look back at that. Uh, see the switch here? It's got off, minimum, medium, maximum, and then UM, which is, is that ultra maximum? That might be an in-house joke. I'm not really sure the UM. I don't know what it means. Uh, but it is uh, the highest setting it goes to, the maximum amount of oil in your air. Uh, but that switch literally has uh, one, two, three, four, five positions, including the off, because uh, it doesn't physically switch the power off. It just tells the processor that the switch is in the off position. And they all go to their own pins on the microcontroller. The uh, battery supply comes in here, and there's a boost circuit that can be turned on and off based on this little chip here. And uh, there's also an A1SHB MOSFET. And it's interesting to know that this MOSFET... Um, well, I'll show you in the schematic, but it basically allows the battery to feed the chip. But when the chip turns the boost circuit on for 12 volts, when it's atomizing the fog, 
it knows that the battery voltage may drop, so it actually turns the battery feed off and it powers itself from the 12 volt feed via this resistor and uh, a little Zener diode here. Quite an interesting bit of circuitry. And they've also used this MOSFET back to front just so they can't accidentally back feed to the, the battery. Very clever. There's a crystal with its two little load capacitors. Um, there is the resistor feeding the LED that just makes the front face glow. It's quite nice. I like the fact that they've got this little reflector cup here uh, for that. And the LED not being driven excessively, but just in that little reflector cup. And the plastic is patterned to give a slight ripple of illumination. That is quite nice features. Then there's a beefier MOSFET here. Now, I don't know why they've got gate source drain because uh, it's actually gate source drain. The, the source and drain are swapped here. I'm not sure why. Maybe they were just uh, getting their head twisted because of the fact that this uh, swaps the uh, source and the drain effectively, the functions. But when the unit is actually producing atomized fog, and it's this little atomizer here, there's a spring on top, a little insulating disc, and then the atomizing disc itself. Can I just pop that out and show you it? I'll just tip it up like that. It sits loose in here. It's a piezoelectric disc with the metal on one side that it's vibrating and then a little uh, electrode on, on the top as well. So the little disc of, ele of uh, piezoelectric material has an electrode on either side and when you apply high frequency AC to it, it basically contracts, it, it moves, it basically compresses and releases and that causes this disc to move and it does so at its resonant frequency to get the atomizing effect at uh, many, many kilohertz. Where's that little... Uh, Insulator, I shall put it back on. When you put the bottle of oil in, it pushes that disc up slightly with this very gentle spring for two reasons. It applies a slight pressure onto the top of the oil container. Let me just open the oil container here. I shall put it under the bench to, it's got a childproof cap in it. Every time I release one of these videos, people say, how do I get the cap off? Well, you have to use superhuman force in some of them, unfortunately. But here's the wick for the oil. And when you actually put it in here, it pushes up. I don't know if you're going to see this, but it pushes up against that. And that does two things. It applies the slight pressure to the top, but it also it means if there's, the top's not particularly even, the disc will just sit at the slight angle onto it to make a nice solid mating. Oh, it's stinky. Yes, quite a nice smell, I have to say. But it's chemical oils nonetheless. Uh, so when it wants to do that, it starts driving this MOSFET. The MOSFET pulses this inductor, and in doing so, it uh, builds up a magnetic field. Then this turns off, the field collapses, and you get a high-voltage spike goes via this capacitor, which is for a reason I'll show in the schematic. And then there is a capacitor across the uh, piezoelectric disc to tune it, perhaps, or prevent it again. I'm not really sure the, the science behind having that across there. Um, that is it. Uh, right, let's go to the schematic and we'll explore that in more detail. So much science. Oh, there's another train. What a surprise. This is near the main station in Edinburgh. And uh, it's it's very noisy. When it's not trains, it's seagulls and people screaming. It's a uh, lovely accommodation. Very cramped. Literally, see the seat I'm sitting in at the moment? You have to push it in under the bench to be able to get get past the seat in the room. It's It's very optimised. So here's the three AA cells for your 4.5 volts, and that goes up to this 12 volt uh, boost circuit, which I've just shown as a little block here. And this has an enable input. Now, normally the MOSFET, and it's a P-channel MOSFET, so it switches to the positive rail and is turned on by pulling the gate negative. So it's got a 47K resistor to pull that negative. So by default, this MOSFET is on, current flows through, powers the microcontroller. When the microcontroller detects the switch is in a position for aroma and when it's reached the time required for that, it will ramp this LED up, but it will also send an enable signal out to the uh, step-up circuit. And that same enable signal, because it's going positive to enable that, also takes the uh, gate of this MOSFET up to the positive rail, which effectively turns it off. Uh, that means it's now being powered via the 12 volt circuit via this 560 ohm resistor going down to this, I'm guessing, 5.1 volt Zener diode and a little decoupling capacitor. 
Um, that 12 volts is also switched. Oh, it goes over to this inductor, the big inductor. And here's the MOSFET that's switching that down. And because there's a capacitor separating it from the circuit here, that MOSFET, when it's on, clamps this side of the capacitor to the negative rail, basically shunts this little resonator circuit out, the, the piezoelectric circuit. And uh, when it turns, the MOSFET uh, turns off again, it's already put a, a magnetic field into this, that claps, and then it charges that with a very high uh, positive voltage. Let's see, this is purely negative, that's positive. Yes, so it will charge it with very high positive voltage. So this is basically seeing a uh, fairly high frequency, high voltage applied to this network with the little piezoelectric disc and its little capacitor in parallel. There's another bit down here. There's a 10K resistor that keeps this MOSFET turned off pull-down resistor, because it's an N-channel MOSFET, a G01N20. And there's also a 1-ohm sense resistor here to detect the current going through it. And that feeds back via 100-ohm resistor and a little capacitor to the microcontroller here, so it can actually monitor if the voltage across this resistor has gone too high, because maybe it just means that it magnetizes this to its peak uh, saturation and because initially when you turn current on to an inductor the magnetic field building up causes a back emf and it resists the flow of current through it but as soon as it's saturated as soon as it's got as much magnetic field as it can create the current suddenly increases that might be what that's for maybe it's for fine tuning the resonance of the circuit i'm not really sure i don't know what's going on in here rocket science that's what's going on for aroma but that's it uh, it's a very well designed as you'd expect of these things little units uh, even the housing is really well designed it's a more refined version i think than the last one looked at with this slots in it's got a little led it goes in its pillars and plugs in and then when you put this in it's got the uh little connector here for the piezoelectric transducer that also goes onto the circuit board and everything just clips together even this bit clipping onto the top doesn't just act as a diffuser but it also acts as the sort of clamps that spring down just to give it the right pressure for the unit but very clever very interesting albeit very home smelly type devices a lot of science goes into air fresheners very interesting devices